it is important to elucidate and to find out what the actual cause is due to. Women may actually experience post-delivery shedding of hair, something we call telogen effluvium, postpartum. They may also develop female pattern hair loss at the same time and that may be genetic. On the other hand, somebody who's got male pattern hair loss can also have other forms of autoimmune hair loss. It is important to know what your options are. So actually have properly assessed by a dermatologist who will assess the scalp condition as well as the follicles in detail. Do a basic workout from there which may include blood tests, looking at the, the follicles under a folliculoscope and then doing some tests like a hair pull test for example to determine whether the hairs are growing in the growth state or in the shed state. Only when you know the type of hair loss that you have can you delineate what type of treatment options you have, be it topicals or medications or more cosmetic treatments like hair transplant for example. Pulling back your hair can absolutely cause something called traction alopecia. So traction alopecia typically happens to people who tend to braid their hairs or in certain African American types where they used to use corn braids and pleat their hairs down very tight. That is really thinning that happens really over the frontal area. It's due to a pullback, a high tension. And typically in Asian contexts with straighter hairs, it may be women who bun their hairs up very tightly or tie their hair back in a very tight ponytail. So when I see patients, especially females, who come in for the issue of hair loss and you like go through their hairstyling options and what they typically wear on a normal day and they tell you that oh they absolutely bun back and pull back very tightly you tell them to actually have to use a looser style like a loose bun let their hair down for a bit because that constant pressure of pulling the hair roots tends to send a signal to the hair roots to release the hair follicles ahead of time most common patterns of hair loss in Asians or anybody in, in any part of the world it would probably be male or female pattern hair loss. Female pattern hair loss is more common and more men suffer from that than the proportion of women suffering from female pattern hair loss. Other very common types of hair loss would be telogen effluvium. Telogen effluvium can happen after immense stress from surgery or even developing an infection like dengue fever and typically the shedding happens about three months after the injury. This kind of hair loss can also happen chronically from maybe iron deficiency or from other types of mineral or vitamin loss. The other very very common condition would be alopecia areata. That is a form of autoimmune hair loss that can affect the up to 1% of the population at large. Oftentimes, it is a patch that just opens overnight. That is autoimmune in nature and is treated usually with a form of injection into the scalp uh, to stimulate hair to regrow. Nail pattern baldness is something that is pretty common and oftentimes people will watch and notice that their parents or their uncles have had nail pattern hair loss. Typically, there is a certain pattern to it and hence it's coined nail pattern hair loss. The most common pattern will be an M-shaped pattern where there is receding hairline anteriorly over the frontal hairline. Another common pattern where they find that there's a shiny bald spot that opens up right at the crown or the top of the head. So that's the second common pattern. Usually, as the hair loss progresses, there is extension of these areas of loss. So the M-shaped pattern becomes more evident. It starts to recede backwards and it starts to open up on top and join up with the circular area on the top of the scalp as well. And so a whole entire ball alley opens up and they find that afterwards just a horseshoe-shaped ring. So that's how um, the various stages of male pattern hair loss evolve. In order to know whether you're a good candidate for hair transplant, you have to see a dermatologist beforehand who specializes in hair loss and hair transplantation to determine if you're a suitable candidate. Oftentimes, patients may think that they're suitable for hair transplant, but if they have another condition that is undiagnosed, they may not be that suitable at that juncture. For example, if you have a condition like alopecia areata or the autoimmune form of hair loss that was very, very recent and it's just recently stabilized, and you also have male pattern hair loss, which you're trying to treat with a hair transplant, I would usually recommend patients to wait this out. Otherwise, sometimes this might activate the autoimmune hair loss and that might actually occur after hair transplantation. Or somebody may have coexisting scalp psoriasis. And if you instrument the scalp for hair transplantation and the scalp psoriasis is not well controlled, it may actually aggravate the psoriasis and actually cause it to flare up. So there are many issues to consider before going into hair transplantation. There is a correlation between um, some of the hair supplements, for example, like biotin and the strength and the quality of the hair as well as hair growth. A supplement like biotin does strengthen hair as well as your nails. It's also increased the rate of growth. So typically, it helps the hair grow out faster.
I recommend washing your hair every day in Singapore's climate. Just once a day is probably enough and not longer than once every two days. Why? Because in Singapore's humidity, there is a lot of buildup of residue, a lot of buildup of oiliness. Typically, oiliness is not great for the scalp, especially if you have pattern hair loss, the increased amount of oil sitting on the hair follicles does increase the contact time of uh, dihydrotestosterone on the hair follicles. I always tell patients that contrary to what they think, especially when they have hair loss, they oftentimes try to wash their hair, hair less often. I tell them that washing the hair, keeping the scalp clean on a daily basis is absolutely essential. There is no formal test that can help you evaluate the strength or the quality of your hair. However, you can have your doctor look at the hair follicles and the roots under a trichoscope. That can help the doctor determine if there's any other form of hair loss and to look at the quality of the roots growing out. There is one other test that you can do, which is a hair pull test. Typically, we will sample some of the hairs and look under a microscope to see how many hairs are in the growth stage, which is what we call the energy stage, and how many of the hair bulbs that we pull are in the telogen stage or the sleeping stage. Typically, in terms of ratio, we want most people to have at least 85 to 90% of the hairs in the energy stage and 10 to 15% in the telogen stage. We do not want the ratio of telogen to be tilted to more than 20 or 30%. Typically, when that happens, then it may signal that the patient is having a condition called telogen effluvium. So that may mean that the hair is actively shedding and is unhealthy.